Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back, Droid Life Show today, <laughs> episode uh, uh, 194. It's uh, Friday, January 11th. I'm Yos Kelly with me, Tim. Tim's hi. Hi, guys. Tim here. I've got my awesome Droid Life hoodie. Ugh. Yes. Swag shout out. <laughs> oh, you, you got it. That's great. They're pretty soft, yeah. right? They're not bad at all. You were lying. So this is actually my first Droid Life hoodie. I usually always just get shirts because I'm not huge. Like I'm, a, I'm more of a zipper guy than a full pullover. Yeah. And uh, it's so soft. I really love it. <laughs> it's very soft. And I, like the one I have, I already washed a couple of times. It's still quite soft. Like it very doesn't soft. go away. You know, like when you buy a shirt, sometimes it's really soft right away. And then you wash it and it gets crusty. That That did not happen with that. How do they do that? I don't know. Must it's be probably, like Cutty's Edge sweater technology in it's here. It's probably hella synthetic or something. I have no idea. Yeah. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining us. We are uh, we're back from CES. Uh, we've been there all week. Well, we were there most of the week. We actually were much shorter at CES than uh, in years past. But uh, we're back. Got what we needed from there, and uh, excited to like move on from CES and look forward to what's to come. Uh, on today's show. Uh, I hate to do the disappointing part first, but no, no trivia this week. Uh, oh, trivia will be back next week or whenever the next show is for sure. We're lining up some prizes and all of that stuff. We just kind of wanted to get in this week, talk about CES, get you guys out of here. So if you want to like run away from the show right now, I totally understand. But uh, no trivia, yeah. no, no trivia this week. But we will <laughs> be talking about uh, Galaxy S10 because we have a new launch or we have we have an exact launch date for the Galaxy S10, or I should say announcement date uh we do we are going to recap some of the stuff from ces talking again about att's fake 5g and we have a january android security patch and the end of the uh the nexus line forever uh so yeah look everyone's like i'm out of here no trivia again apologize we just it's just been it's been a long week and uh i don't know that our minds are ready to uh come up with interesting trivia questions Maybe we're being lazy. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. Uh, we do have fun topics, though. I promise it'll be it'll be somewhat of a decent show. So, oh gosh. <laughs> this is depressing. Shut it down. I, I mean, I, I think some people are are joking, but hang I, out with us. We still yeah. have decent conversations. Uh, before we get going, though, before the show ever started, we had three donations. Clinton dropped five bucks, and it says at 1:19 p.m., but it's only noon here so clint i don't know if you dropped that yesterday the, I, I don't really know but either way clinton thanks for the five bucks uh right after him alex dropped five bucks and just said thank you well thank you alex uh appreciate the five bucks i know you've donated a ton so thank you so much for all the support and uh pc 747 dropped 10 bucks right after alex said uh celebrating 10 years of droid life your rooting videos particularly shoals mod helped me root my droid and i've been hooked to android ever since thanks then and thanks now Appreciate it, 747. I know you've also donated plenty as well over the over the span of this. So glad we could help out. And thanks for hanging out with us for so long. Uh, we're pushing towards 10 years. We hit nine years in December. So this will be our 10th year coming up. We're getting so close, though. And the fact that you've been around for that long is, uh, is just crazy. And I know there's a bunch of you that have been around for that long. It's just it's wild to think that we've been hanging out with like the same crew of people for nine years. 90 or something like that. Oh, Clinton says that was last week. I don't know, Clinton. It said uh, it said that you did it recently. So you must have maybe done it right after last week's show ended. It just popped up for us today. I'm not really sure. Either way, thanks for the five bucks. Uh, Rick just dropped five bucks. Said, glad to be here, guys. Appreciate it, Rick. Thanks for the five bucks. Thank you, Rick. I mean, we could just not do a show and just read out donations if you guys just want to keep them coming. We can just <laughs> yeah, you guys are crazy. Yeah, we haven't even gotten long. going. Yeah. And you guys thank are just, uh, yes, yes. Very much. Thank you. Uh, anyway, let's let's do first topic. Let's uh, let's get going a little bit here. So, Galaxy S10. Uh, it was interesting. On well, did it, this happened on what was it, Thursday morning, yesterday morning. So yesterday morning, uh, I think the Wall Street Journal reported, according to sources, that Samsung was maybe going to do February twentieth in San Francisco to announce the S10, and then they also said that they'll show off a foldable phone at that time. And, and then all the like, sort of Samsung leaker guys, like at the same, like shortly after that, were like, yeah, yeah, February 20th. And we weren't really sure. There was no official word. And then I think Samsung just went, yeah, let's just do it. And sure enough, announced February 20th, they will announce the next Galaxy. It'll be the Galaxy S10 uh, and in San Francisco. So, I mean, Tim and I are like, yes, San Francisco. We don't have to fly to New York. I don't know why they decided to flip-flop coasts like that, but uh, I am not. 
about to complain about the uh, hour and 30 minute flight for Tim and I rather than across country. So either way, February 20th in San Francisco, I believe there's also a London event. I can't imagine they're just doing San Francisco, but if they are great. And I don't think we know the actual location yet. Do we, if we do, that might be something we can't talk about. Yeah. I don't think we know location. We just know that it's happening that day. Uh, We'll be on hand for whatever they show off. I mean, this is kind of a big deal. It's 10 years of galaxy S phones. Uh, we also have note phones mixed in there too, but this, this will be the 10th version. Well, there's way more than 10 galaxy S phones. I mean, there was like actives and edges and pluses and stuff, but for years of it, we're at 10 years, which is a crazy amount of time to think. Uh, I don't know that anyone else is, you know, like HTC changed styles and naming schemes a couple of times. Motorola has, LG has. So they're kind of the only one that's really hung on to that same line for uh, 10 straight years, which is uh, other than Apple, which is well, actually Apple kind of mixed everything up, too. So uh, very I, cool. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah, I, I was going to say, I love that Samsung dropped this news on Thursday so that the biggest news out of CES could be that the Galaxy S10 has a launch date or, you know, an unveiling date. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really goes to show that CES this year uh, was pretty brutal. I know we're going to get into that, but yeah. I mean, it, it's obviously the biggest news of the week, right? That we have a date for Samsung. So <laughs> yeah, that's sad. 100% the, the biggest news of the week. Um, <clears throat> so we're working on a recap post that'll kind of catch everyone up to what's going on with the Galaxy S10. We'll have that up uh, within the next day or so because uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Multiple variations, 5G versions. There's a foldable phone coming out. There's lights and not lights and hole punches. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. We're going to try to give you guys a really, really simple recap to uh, get you all clued in there. Look for that probably like Monday-ish. Um, so yeah, we know Galaxy S10 will be coming on February 20th. That's a little bit earlier than most years. So for the last, well, I should say almost every year, I think there was a year they did it a little bit later, but almost every year, Samsung goes to Mobile World Congress at the end of February and uh, announces whatever the Galaxy S phone is for the year. And so this year they're doing it a week before that event. And I, I'd imagine it's because look, it's the 10th anniversary they don't want to share the spotlight with that whole event and all the other companies showing stuff on. They just want to do it on their own. So Samsung will show off the Galaxy S10 a week before MWC. So it feels a little bit earlier. And uh, that's also very exciting because we don't usually don't go to MWC. And now we don't have to worry about not being at Samsung's things for MWC. So February 20th. Mm-hmm. Good times. Uh, so Samsung yesterday, uh, this is kind of a related topic, but Samsung, as they were announcing this date, they said, look, we're celebrating 10 years of Galaxy. And uh, so we just put up a little, it's not really a poll, it's more of just a question on which of the 10 years of Galaxy S phones stands out the most to you. Uh, and the answers were actually kind of all over the place. I looked at a bunch on Twitter and then obviously a bunch in the comments. Um uh, like it's funny, the first comment that right now has the most votes is uh, the Galaxy S3 and NFC, and the reason was because of that commercial where the husband is getting in the cab to leave, and the wife is beaming him videos, and she's like, "And here's something special," and beams it, and it's, like, <laughs> and so like that's like what stood out to some people. Like somebody mentioned to me like the Galaxy S4 because of the like Broadway musical they put on on stage, uh, you know, like when you start thinking back to like all the crazy stuff they uh, they did. So for me, it was the Galaxy S6, but and I can explain that. But is there like when you think of what Galaxy S phone stands out the most? Was there a specific one? Stands out the most. And it could be for any a, reason. Like, but when exactly. you think of like, what am I thinking back? Yeah. Yeah. For a negative reason, it would just be the S5 with how kind of bad it was. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get it was like sort of a water resistant Galaxy phone, which was cool, but you had to have the little cap. Right? <laughs> and the flap. They design on the back. I mean, it was just like a bad phone, that fake chrome metal plastic around the size of the phone it was just not very good um you know in terms of being a good phone the galaxy s6 i think is also what kind of just changed my mind with galaxy phones where the hardware got really sweet with metal and glass and then they started taking things real seriously and we it was the end of the plastic yeah so i mean that's kind of what changed the game so yeah that's what it was for me is the s6 
uh, for like multiple reasons. Number one is kind of what you said. It, it finally transitioned them out of the plastic era. Like when they did the S5, they were one of the last companies still holding on to the super cheap plastic filling stuff. Like Apple was all metal. HTC was going all metal. And Samsung was still shipping this really, really cheap. Pra- yeah. And they like, yeah, they painted plastic to look like metal and then they had the band-aid jokes and all that stuff and then yeah the flap over the i mean just just ridiculous so galaxy s6 ushered in like what we have now from samsung the all metal and glass the like jewel experience the super premium if you want to call it that um and that design language that we first got with the s6 like you still see that in the s9 like the s9 still kind of looks like uh an s6 uh, and then we got the uh, the dual curve display with that. Like they had previously given us that note edge thing that had the one slanted edge, which I still do not understand that at all. But we had an S6 edge. Like remember when they launched, you could get the S6 or the S6 edge. They were both the same size phone, just one was curved and one was flat. And it was like, you got to decide. Like I think you liked the S6 edge and I said, no, give me the flat guy. So, uh, so that, and then that carried forward and now everything's got curved edges and everything's metal and glass. And so, yeah, the S6 for me, but I get why people are saying, and S3s and S4s and stuff like that too, but uh, I definitely don't think the S5 was a year to remember. In fact, I think it wasn't the S5 where they had a really terrible sales year. Like that was when they had a big downturn and then they flipped it back over with the S6 and S7 to kind of make some sort of a comeback, but... That would not surprise me at all. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Someone said Galaxy Nexus was doesn't really count as a Galaxy definitely S phone. Count. Not as a Galaxy S phone, no. Some people tried to throw out notes in there, but we wanted Galaxy S in there. So, the emerald green Galaxy is S6 Edge. I forgot about that one. That was like an underrated, pretty version that you couldn't really get in the U.S. I think you had to import the green one. Well, that green one was definitely like a a bullet Mustang uh, kind of color back in there. It was like a dark that emerald green. Like that was a that was a pretty hot phone. Props mm-hmm. to whoever mentioned that. Yep, definitely. Uh, So anyway, I just thought that was kind of an interesting conversation. Lots of comments on that post. If you guys want to go check that out and uh, weigh in. But there's just been there's been 10 years of them. I do remember the Galaxy S2 standing out. And the reason it just stands out for me is because you couldn't really buy it anywhere in the U.S. Like, I don't know if you remember that. Like they went Galaxy S, which there was four different models on all the different carriers. And then the S2 came out. And I don't actually think a U.S. carrier sold the S2. You had to import and it was one of those years where samsung made at least internationally made a huge name for itself because it was one of the most powerful phones with the camera and display and all this stuff it was awesome but it didn't really come to the u.s so i imported one and used it i think on at&t and i think i only got hsba plus or something on it and it was awesome but it was one of those that all the carriers for whatever reason maybe it's because they got the, the galaxy s so late in the cycle or something like that but that one stands out just because I remember using it and going, this is one of the first times. It was it was early in Droid Life, and I just remember going, this is one of those first times I have a phone that no one else I know will ever have. But yeah, anyways. as Nick Fisher points out in the comments, at t picked up the regular S2, uh, but they called it, like, weird names, right? It was the S2 Skyrocket Sky or Rocket. whatever. And, That's uh, right. And they got it actually, really late, too, right? It was. It was super late. It was months behind. That's um, right. And then they just named it different stuff. And uh, That's right. there was a time when these carriers were coming up with their own name, right? Their own kind of, I guess, uh, custom names. Yeah. It was pretty dumb. And I think that was the year where didn't AT&T have like three different versions of it too or something like that? Like it was, you Um, couldn't even keep up. Yeah, because one was LTE, one wasn't. Yeah, there was the Sky. I mean, just what a disaster. 10 years though. I mean, that's that's quite the history. That's a lot. A lot of companies say that. No. So, at the uh, at the event, Wall Street Journal is reporting that the full like a, a fully functional is how they put it a foldable phone from Samsung will be there. Are we actually calling that the Galaxy F? Is that like uh, an official? Do we think that's an the actual name? There's no way they're going to call it Galaxy F, are they? No, I think that's just sort of like a helpful placeholder to say like F for fold. Uh, okay, Galaxy. It can't be the Galaxy foldable either, right? I, I actually mm. want to know what the hell they're going to call it. I thought we could just do Galaxy Flex or something like that. Uh. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of what, what a cool name would be for a foldable phone. But um, either way, it's supposed to be fully functional. You guys remember when we first saw this phone, it was at uh, Samsung's developer conference in, I think, early November. Uh, and they didn't really want to show much. It was a phone in a case. It folded. It had a little mini screen on the front, unfolded to a bigger screen. 
I don't really have much of like a reaction to it because they didn't show us an actual phone. So I don't really know if it's cool or not cool. But either way, we should see it. Uh, my guess is that they're not going to give us pricing availability or anything. I mean, if they were a prototype still in November and then mid or I guess like mid late February I, I, and, and we're still worrying about it being fully functional, it doesn't really sound like it's here yet. Um, also, I doubt the 5G phone will be there. I'm guessing we're going to get a Galaxy S10 5G later down the road because if they launch it now, it, there's no network uh, really for it to work on outside of maybe at and So kind of doubt that's happening until this summer. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of the big news of the week outside of whatever happened at CES. The Galaxy S10 date set for February 20th, San Francisco. And uh, we should see more on the foldable phone. And we're 10 years of uh, Galaxy S phones. Yeah. Well. Yeah, see, like Scott writes, I have to pay respects. I mean, that's like what I think now. When I, now that you guys taught me what that, what that means. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Good times. All right. So, yeah, CES happened this week. Uh, again, used to be called Consumer Electronics Show, for those who don't know. Now it's just referred to as CES. Uh, second week of January, every single year, giant electronic show in Las Vegas. We were there for our eighth year in a row, which is also kind of crazy. Uh, our eighth year at CES. Um, it, we're at the point now where CES you get, used to be like some sort of mobile related show for a little bit there, not, not a super long time. Uh, it's always been a big TV focused show. Uh, lots of new appliances. Uh, now you get more car tech than ever before. Um, it's not really a mobile show and it hasn't been for a while. So Tim and I don't get overly excited about it. We just go to see what ends up happening that could be related to what we talk about here. And thankfully, Google's been there the last couple of years putting Assistant in everything. And they were there once again this year. And so Assistant is in a whole bunch of stuff. There's new headphones from JBL and Jabra and probably more companies I'm not thinking of that now have um, assisted in them. There's new speakers with companies like Marley jumping on board now or House of Marley jumping on board uh, to put assistant in their speakers. Uh, there's assistant in more TVs than ever and Android TV and more TVs than ever. Uh, we got a new KitchenAid smart display. So KitchenAid, that, yes, that KitchenAid that makes mixers, they may, they're they making a smart display. Uh, it's actually semi water resistant. So you can like wash it off if it gets all nasty. Lenovo introduced a new version of their smart display called the smart clock, which is like this cute little smart clock. Um, what else do we get? Uh, the JBL link bar, which is the JBL bar that has assistant built in, but also Android TV built in. So you could connect it to your home and basically it'll be your, your home hub. We finally got uh, a new ish date for that. It's now launching in the spring. So it's been delayed like what a good six months at this point. So Some it's del delayed till spring is how I would put that. Um, in terms of assistant stuff. Oh, the, like we're putting stuff assistant in like Moen bathroom dong or not not dongles but moen bathroom accessories products i don't know there's showers you can now control using google assistant and smart mirrors have the google assist i mean the assistant is in absolutely everything at this point so that was kind of one of the big themes which we sort of expected that means amazon alexas and a whole bunch of new stuff too um including lenovo they created a smart tab that has alexa in it and it's like a smart display uh, that sits a display on a speaker, but you can lift up the display so and carry it around tablet and then the speaker sits there and you can use that as a Bluetooth tablet. And I totally wish that Google would do something similar. In fact, when the smart the Google Home Hub came out, I think a lot of people thought maybe you'd be able to detach the display from the little speaker base, but that didn't actually happen. Hmm. So uh, kind of some interesting stuff. We got Google Assistant in... Uh, car uh lighter cigarette lighter dongle thingies did you look at these at all <laughs> these dongle cigarette lighter car google assistant things so yeah. jbl made one and was it anchor anchors rove brand i think has the other one so people keep asking me well how does this work what if i don't have bluetooth in my car well they're supposed to just bluetooth to your phone and then if you have bluetooth in your car or an aux port you can sort of connect them through that too um, and so some people go well my phone has assistant and i can say you know the google hot word to it why do i need this thing and i, I don't really have an answer for them 
it, I think it has better microphones. So if you're using the Google hot word and you're shouting out whatever you need, it'll fire up maybe easier. Um, and then these things also charge your phone if you want them to. But people keep asking me like, well, why can't I just use my phone? And I guess I don't really have an answer. Like I sent it to my dad. He's like, anything cool? And I was like, well, maybe these because his like his Toyota truck doesn't have um, Android Auto in it. And he's like, well, why can't I just use my phone? And I didn't I didn't have an answer for him. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could tell you. I don't think yeah. I mean, the product isn't necessarily made maybe for people ahead of the curve. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm just thinking like even if you have, let's say you have an older car that doesn't even have Bluetooth, right? Okay. Or an aux port, right? So okay. you plug that into your cigarette lighter and then you Bluetooth that to your phone and then you do Google Assistant stuff. I mean, it's just kind of running through your phone, but you could just install the Android Auto app on your phone and do it anyway. Maybe it's if you don't have like a dock for your phone, like you don't have it attached, right? You just have it like tucked in your pocket but then you connect to that dongle thing you kind of do it just by voice i guess otherwise i'm not really sure it seems very weird i think we're just gonna have to get one and try it out i guess so that sounds painful no but, but what are totally these like five five ten bucks no they're like 60 bucks the fuck? <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> anyway so so that happened though um i'm trying to see we got a list here so um, I would say one of the coolest things though was that Lenovo smart clock that we mentioned earlier. It, it's like this little, it's this little dude. I don't, I was looking at my desk to see if I have anything the size. So Google home hub is quite small. This Lenovo smart clock is smaller than Google home hub, but it just looks cool. Cause it could be your bedtime clock. That's also a Google assistant smart display. So, um, it doesn't come out. I think till, is that a spring release? The Lenovo smart clock. Do you remember? Correct. Spring. Yeah, so for some reason we have to wait a really long time for it, but it's only 80 bucks. I shouldn't say only. It's not like that's super cheap, but that's cheaper than any of the home hubs. Yeah, it was either 79 or 69. Um yeah. one of those. And I mean, you know, I've been wanting like an Amazon or an Echo Spot uh, just because I want like a smart alarm clock, you know, mm -hmm. not having to I guess rely on the phone or something. I can just like plug in the phone and forget about it having I like having a dedicated alarm clock that sits on my nightstand. That's just, I guess it's like a, something from when you're a kid, you know, you just, it's something you have. Yeah. Um, so having that would be really nice. Uh, it's kind of an expensive alarm clock. Uh, cause I'm not going to use it for anything else because it's, you know, on the nightstand next to my bed. I'm not going to go up there and watch yeah. YouTube TV on it or anything like that. So kind of pricey. I was maybe hoping for 50 bucks, but 50 I get it's bucks. got a display and all that. So, uh, yeah, that's true. It, it is one of those products where, I mean, I guess you could put one on your office desk, but the display is so tiny, sure. I don't know that you would want to. And yeah, for 80 bucks, it sits next to your bed, which like you said, you get out of bed in the morning, you're never going to look at it again the rest of the day. So yeah. I don't, I guess now that you put it that way, I don't know that that's totally worth it. That would be better probably at like 50 bucks, but it does have a display on it. I'm assuming that's where the price is. Yeah. People say get, get a pixel stand or something yeah. like, ah, I don't really, I don't use phone stands. I never have likely never will um i don't know i guess i just never needed one i don't know i'm a weirdo i do but, have a pixel stand next to my bed and that's what i use and you could have yeah. that be because you could set it right to do the sunrise alarm where it slowly turns like amberish color so that's what i use the only thing is a pixel stand is also 80 bucks like mm. do you want that like a dumb stand for 80 bucks or, or... a standalone device yeah so that's kind mm. of the argument there that's that'd be tough but i think i got this pixel stand that i have by my bed for what, what didn't best buy have them for like 40 bucks or something like that over black friday so i think i picked one up that i wouldn't pay 80 bucks for it but i do have one by my bed and i use it every every damn night you know the problem though <laughs> What's with problem? this is now a wireless charging problem in general is if you have that by your bed and you go to bed and that's usually when you're at night and that's usually when your battery's at its lowest points unless you've found some magic time to charge it in between there but you lay in bed and you still want to use your phone a little bit if you have a wireless charger there you can't right because you need the damn cord to plug it in so like last night that happened to me and i had mm -hmm. to unplug the wireless charger and plug it in my phone so i could use it a little bit and then when i decided to go to bed i had to like fumble in the dark to find the plug so the, the, the wireless chargers have some issues but just well little, yeah just a little thing there i agree with that i still uh, i still need a wireless charger a little uh, nightstand for my kia even though i need them to be better 
You know, like the, they don't really charge quick at all. No, so you need this pixel of, stand. Well, they, uh, something about stands. 80, Eighty bucks too doesn't. Yeah, maybe I'll just wait for this black upcoming Black Friday. That's exactly I, what you should do. They'll have a new one. one. They'll have a new one though, and it'll still be eighty bucks. Yeah. All right. So uh, outside of the smart clock, uh, does anyone remember the uh, Nvidia BFGD displays, the big effing gaming displays? I do. Of course, Tim does. So at last year's CES, Nvidia showed off the BFGD line, and it was there was at least three different. I, I can't call them TVs because they're not TVs. They are displays. There's no TV tuner in them. They're technically a display. But they're 65 inch 4K with like G Sync and HDR and all the stuff you want in them, right? Yeah. And they're made for gaming, though. Uh, and they're yep. 65 inches. So they look like the size of a TV, but they're made for gaming. So they showed them off at, at CES last year. And what, are, what who are their partners? Like Asus, HP, and Acer. Acer. And they all looked great, and we wanted them. And they run Android TV, which is why we are even talking about them. Or I should say Shield TV, which just means they run Android TV and have some extra Shield apps in there. So they are kind of related to what we do, but they never. we went a whole year didn't hear anything else about them. Uh, so CES, just this week, they, they didn't re-announce them, but HP announced that they are the first that's going to sell one. And they're five. It starts at five thousand bucks. So, and that's a pre-order. I don't know. Do you know when this thing's shipping? It's supposed to ship? Uh, Is it also it, spring? Like I feel like everything this week was spring. I could have sworn <laughs> that there was like a time frame for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just checking real quick. Uh, no. I guess it's just pre-order. <laughs> just pre-order. So. HP's the first. I don't know if Acer and Asus just ditched the platform and said, I don't want to do this. I have no idea what happened there, but HP's ready to go with the Omen X Imperium 65. And it is still just a display, not a TV. I mean, look, you could, it has Android TV on it. So you could install YouTube TV. You could install any of those TV streaming apps and it could be your TV. You don't, you, I guess you don't necessarily have to use it, but if you have a cable box and that's how you know, do your TV, this doesn't have... A tuner in it so you can't like hook up comcast necessarily there's maybe there's some weird work around there but just out of the box you can't really do that uh but so five thousand bucks is that is that uh is that priced right i'm trying to think like when when you look at gaming displays in general like let's say you buy a 4k 27 inch gaming display right now that's like 500 bucks right like a gaming display like five six hundred bucks for a nice one for a nice one, sure. Yeah. I mean, depends. I mean, that's all relative. Yeah, I guess. I guess they all depend. But five thousand bucks seems like a lot. Like this is just for people who their life is games and they just have money to blow on all sorts of crap. Like I'm, I'm not gonna buy one of these. Hopefully, you get a review unit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the main argument from people is that this isn't a TV. However, it's trying to, I guess, compete with the some of the most high end televisions that are available right now. Um, and this is an LCD panel right. versus. OLED, uh, which is getting up to those same refresh rates uh, that we're seeing on this 144 hertz, and you can get like an OLED at 120. So, I mean, really, do you just do you do this and and kind of lose out maybe on the tuner aspect or something? But but really, I think everything is switching to streaming. You know, th this is almost like the display of the future, right? I don't think you're going to be hearing a lot about cable companies in the in the years to come, right? It's all going to be about streaming. So. This is kind of ahead of the curve. I think it, the only issue is, is that for me, uh, $5,000, but the whole LCD aspect, it's it's still fat, right? Where you can get these OLED panels that are, you know, quarter of an inch thick and all this ridiculousness. So yeah, there's, there's some pros and there's some cons. Um, I think it's awesome. And I mean, I they look it. awesome. Yeah. Sure. It's this just thing a has really a big, big sound display. bar underneath it and stuff, so you should get a good sound. Except when people game seriously, they wear headphones. So, I mean, not necessarily yeah. everyone, but yeah. I mean, um, I do want to use one. Yeah, I, I'm thankful that I'm extremely ignorant in terms of G Sync, AMD, Free Sync, and all this <laughs> other stuff. Like this computer techno mumbo jumbo, I don't hardly know anything about it. So. It'd be cool to get this in the office. Maybe I'm going to put it up right behind me here on this wall with all the foam. Just take some of the foam down, throw it on the wall. 
maybe learn all about it. Uh, but the only way to do that is to let HP and NVIDIA know that Droid Life needs it. So feel free to spam on social media that uh, Droid Life is patiently awaiting their review unit. So I'm looking so. at the specs. It has uh, semi-big requirements. Like, like you need at least a GeForce GTX 1050 or... A 1070 or higher is actually recommended, but just to like run anything on it, they're saying you need at least a 1050, but they're recommending a 1070 or higher. Mm -hmm. So uh, no joke there. Uh, let's see what else is on there. Like it's true 4K at 144. See, to, to me, I feel like the play would be sure you could hook this up to a super powered computer and all that, but really like why not? why not push nvidia's uh geforce now right you hook this up with your gig internet your cable internet and then you can just stream every game from their supercomputers uh thanks to aws uh just you can stream your latest AAA titles etc i mean streaming streaming is the future guys i don't know why uh why we're getting hung up on it doesn't have a tuner uh you gotta have a good computer to really get the most out of it like i don't know it seems pretty awesome to me, and NVIDIA is making streaming games pretty darn easy, and Google's trying to do the same, and it's got Android TV. I think this thing's awesome. <laughs> not for, for five thousand bucks, but not it's for awesome. Five thousand bucks. Yeah, it's just out of most. Of, it's out of my price range. It's out of probably a lot of people's price range. So. Yeah. Anyway, so the first one though is now up for pre-order. Like you can go on Amazon and pre-order it for five thousand bucks right now. If anyone's interested. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, so what else was one. there? Um, Mobvoi announced new tick watches. So Mobvoi, for those not familiar, has been uh, producing Wear OS watches for a handful of years now. They originally had the tick watch E and S. These are the E2 and S2. So follow up watches to those. They also have the C2 and the tick watch pro. So they've got, well, with these now, they'll have four that you'll be available. They'll be available to buy at the same time. Uh, the E and S are actually, were actually highly rated watches that you probably had never heard of like price point was great they ran well specs were decent um, and these ones they kind of upgraded them they put them in slightly bigger cases which is unfortunate uh, the original line i think was around 45 millimeter cases now we're closer to 47 millimeter cases so they got bigger they they're not really that much thicker um but they did pick up snapdragon work 2100 whereas previously they were running mediatek chipsets um, they did add NFC, I believe. Did they add NFC? No, they didn't add NFC. Well, that's garbage. Uh, they do have GPS and heart rate, and so they're supposed to be sort of fitness watches. Uh, just looking at them on paper, other than the five ATM swim resistance, they don't really look like upgrades over the original ones because the original ones didn't have NFC either. And the original ones ran MediaTek processors, and I thought the original ones were some of the best performing Wear OS watches, whereas these are just going to go to the 2100, and you'll just get that same garbage performance that you got on anything. So I don't actually know. And, and without having NFC, just like the old ones, I don't know that these are really upgrades. So uh, I will get them in. I'll probably get at least one of them in and wear and review it, but... I'm not exactly that excited for them, unfortunately. And I know they tried to throw in some software tweaks like fall down alerts and some other things, but I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not super excited about these. I actually wish like MediaTek would come out with a new chipset and push it because the Qualcomm Snapdragon 2100 and 3100 are garbage. Yeah, I think smartwatches, after this last week, you know, I saw you using the Fossil Spore and the Mont Blanc Sommier 2. And, eh, I mean, the cool one is obviously the Mont Blanc, mm -hmm. but it's a thousand bucks and you're yeah. wearing it right now. And I mean, if you have to spend a thousand bucks to even get like a really cool experience, there's something <laughs> going on. And, you know, after my time with the LG watch W7, whatever, um, <laughs> I could not be more turned <laughs> off from thing. smartwatches at the moment. It's all you got to go traditional timepiece. Uh, I think unless you you're use, really big into fitness. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's part of it. So why I use this and the and the fossil sport and trade off is just from doing workouts. But the thing is when I go for, if I if I were to go for a run, which I've been slacking on the last like six months, 
I don't wear either. I wear a garment. So, but I, I wear this and that one mostly for like step counting. Then if I get a workout and just so that I have this like record of like that, I actually can convince myself that I was doing workouts at some point in life. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I don't really know. Some people use them for notifications and stuff. I would guess. I, I think like I reviewed the uh, fossil sport not that long ago and I wasn't super kind to it. I basically just told everyone like, look, there's nothing really new here, but I have enjoyed the fossil sport since I got done reviewing it. I mean, if people are looking for a smartwatch, I think the fossil sport is probably the one most should look at. It does have the newest processor in case there's ever advancements that happen with it. It looks nice enough. It looks simple enough. It's pretty affordable. So yeah. I, I've come to appreciate Wear OS. I totally get why it not most people should most people should avoid it probably. <laughs> yeah. Just bring back the Moto three sixty and I'll be fine. Like really like I mean I just really miss the three sixty, even the version two. Um I just yeah, but, miss the simplicity of it, I guess. Motorola can't make anything good anymore, so Oh nah. Rick says his wife has a false sport. I'm glad she's enjoying it. Nice. I mean I hope I, she's enjoying it. That's what I'm thinking. I uh, we get sent a lot of, uh, or just given a lot of fitness bands uh, yeah. from you know companies that we don't really cover. So you know, I have like a plethora of those, and I just kind of give them to my girlfriend. And uh, th the last few have either been like a Huawei band or an Honor brand because they come out with twenty a year, and she kind of doesn't like any of them. And I don't blame her, uh, just because I don't know they they don't look great or anything. So I think I need to get her a Fossil Sport just so it looks better i don't know like little fitness bands eh. I, it's just not my thing that's the thing it's not when i think thing. fossil sport don't they make there's two sizes right so you could even get her a smaller one if she doesn't want the i think the one i have is the 42 i think they make like a 40 a 38 oh, or okay. they might it's somewhere around there too so it might even if, if she's worried about the size on her wrist uh, but those fitness bands you're saying she's using, those obviously last for days and days and days. Whereas this bad boy, sure. like in when Tim and I were in Vegas, he saw that I swapped between the two watches from one day to the next a lot because they last a day. And then yeah, I don't really want to like wait around for the damn thing to charge. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we did get some, some new watches. Um, the JBL link bar, I think looks like a really cool product because it's a sound bar, obviously that doubles as an Android TV box, but man, they just keep delaying that thing. I just keep worrying that they're just going to cancel it. Um, and it's 400 bucks and there's an optional subwoofer for it. That's another 300 bucks, which is just a lot, a lot of money. Uh, we did get a whole bunch of Google assistant, just general announcements though. In fact, Google put out this massive blog post on at the beginning of CES to talk about all the stuff. So, uh, just briefly like Google maps will now have Google assistant within it. This thing seems like something that should have been there a year or so ago, but Google assistant is coming to Google maps, which is, uh, which is pretty great news. And it's supposed to be rolling out like right away. I haven't looked, but so I don't know if I have it, but I could look right now. Do you have a uh, do you have Google Assistant in Google Maps yet? You're like I haven't opened Google Maps. Where have I gone? Uh, well, the thing is, I uh, I have to use Google Maps everywhere I go because even though I've lived here for six years now, I still have no idea how to get anywhere in this town. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm looking at it and I'm not seeing. I didn't see it either. I didn't see but, it either. So yeah. that must be one of those classic Google slow rollouts. But either way, uh, Assistant's coming to Google Maps. Uh, we're also getting, well, Sonos and Google once again said, Hey, Google Assistant's coming to our Sonos speakers. And, uh, apparently Sonos actually showed it off working to people, but they've been talking about doing this for over a year and they still said it's coming. They still won't, won't give us a date on that, but the Sonos one and Sonos beam, which are their two newest speakers that also have Alexa and have microphones are getting it for sure. Google said somehow they're going to bring the functionality to older ones, but their older ones don't have microphones. So I have no idea how that's going to work. It must be just, well, they're already cast target. So I'm not really sure how Google plans to do that, but uh, they said that could happen. Hmm. Um, they announced some new stuff around uh, having Google assistant check on your flights and pull up your flight passes and stuff like that. But what did you say? It only works with United for now. Yeah. It only works for United. And you can book uh, hotels easier with Google assistant. They announced a, yeah, they also announced an interpreter mode for Google Assistant where you can just say like, hey, Google, or, oh, no, 
just make sure I didn't turn every, everyone's on there. Uh, go to interpreter mode and it'll flip to interpreter mode and then you can have conversations with people and it'll do real-time translation. So they announced a whole bunch of stuff. Google Assistant just keeps getting more advanced and better and all of that good stuff. A lot of that stuff, stuff I probably won't use very often, but uh, the Google Assistant and Maps is fantastic. That's great. And I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, cool stuff that we covered at a CES. I'm trying to think, was there anything that just happened that was cool that wasn't related to what we did? Like somebody mentioned um, that LG OLED roll-up TV, which is absolutely ridiculously cool. Uh, So LG, if you missed that, they announced like their OLED R or something like that TV. I don't think they put a price on it, but it's basically this box and it sits on this really modern, cool stand and you hit a button and it unrolls. And then it rolls back down. It'll stop like halfway and show you the weather and pictures and stuff. Like it is crazy cool. I I don't, I have no idea how much it's going to go. I'd guess at least 10, maybe 20 grand. I'm not even sure like where that thing's priced. I would love one, but uh, it was cool. Like they, it was one of those demos where they've been talking about, yeah, we're going to have a roll up TV. And this year they actually said, look, here it is. We're going to sell this thing. It was awesome. Uh, I don't know. What else? What else did they? Is there anything else that like stuck out from CS that was really really cool? Uh, stuck out that was really really cool. Mm-hmm. Like there was 8K everywhere. Everyone's mentioning that. My problem with 8K is we don't even have content for 4K. So if we're going up to 8K, that's just gonna be a it's gonna be a decade before we get there. And by the time we get to 8K, there will probably be better 8K than this first 8K. So yeah, kind of tough. Uh, I mean, for me, in my eyes, CES, I don't know, 2019, I don't know if there was really, I, mean, not, I don't know if much stood out to me. Um, That's what I'm saying, the, mean, ro- the rollable TV was like my favorite part. I guess, yeah. Um, the <laughs> Lenovo smart clock, I guess, is my favorite announcement. You know, I actually really appreciate that 5G wasn't as big of a deal as it was simply because 5G isn't here yet. And yeah. Uh, so companies weren't, I guess, in your face about, I mean, everyone talked about, well, yeah, it's going to be great. Here it comes, but it wasn't, um, overkill. No, uh, we didn't get much on 5g. We thought we would, but we didn't. Yeah. So I'm guessing uh, 2020 will be a big year for 5g. Could be, it could be it's crazy. I think crazy. everyone was avoiding it because we're just, no one's really released anything 5g related. You know, Verizon still hasn't even announced their 5g network yet. AT&T did, but we all know that. It's nothing yet. T-Mobile hasn't announced their network yet. Sprint hasn't either. So it's kind of, we thought it might've come and just kind of, it was like a sideshow of people just mocking at t which we'll talk about a little bit later. So yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a tough CES. I suppose. Uh, uh, we Tom learned that Kellen coming. is the legend uh, from our good friends at visible uh they apparently read a post that kellen did where kellen just went in um because back in the day visible who is a prepaid carrier a sub of verizon they refused to call themselves prepaid verizon or uh kellen made sure to let them know that they were prepaid in a post and now they call him legend so i don't uh i don't know there will be more to come of that but <laughs> there will be. We had, a, we had a good meeting with the folks at Visible, and just in case you were wondering, uh, <laughs> not much we can talk about. We had a good meeting. They they uh, they got they got jokes. Typically, mostly surrounding yeah a post I did where I kind of went a little, where kind of went a little off on Visible. Nice, great, great people though. Oh, absolutely. Sometimes I just go off a little bit. Sometimes you do. Uh, let's see. The other side of CES for us, for those of you who uh, hang around the uh, the site much, know that we, Tim and I also go partly just because we like to eat good food. <laughs> so uh, every year we do like a end of CES dinner. We always pick like one restaurant and just go off and just eat as much as we possibly can. This year we uh, went to uh, Hell's Kitchen. That was the uh, that was the spot. Uh, Tim Big Hell's Fishing Hell's Kitchen fan. Hell's Fish. Yeah, I, I do not watch the show, but I do like Ramsey restaurants. We've visited a handful in the past for our CES dinner. Uh, we went to Hell's Kitchen this year, and it was uh, it was quite good. 
It didn't disappoint. No. Um, as kitschy as the place is and very much a theme restaurant Ooh, centering yeah. around Hell's Kitchen, the TV yeah. show, they even have TVs that are playing replays <laughs> yes. of the show. Yes. Everything is just like um, Gordon Ramsay swag and Hell's Kitchen swag. So it's very much a huge commercial yeah. for the show. But fantastic restaurant. Uh, the service was amazing. And if you talk smack about your waiter while he's at the other table, they will bring you free wine and free desserts that we learned. So I thought it was a really good time. The oh, steak man. was delicious. Everything was good. I had a good time. Great time. Yeah. yeah. Split a big tomahawk, had some wine and martinis, and uh, it was great. It was yeah. great. It was it was a solid spot. It is a little themey, a little too themey maybe for me, but uh, that's also because, I, like I said, I don't watch the show. But dinner was solid for sure. Yeah. Uh, Skin and Bones is asking, uh, yeah, uh, about Dennis Rodman and our encounter with Dennis, oh, yeah. uh, calling us geek guys at CES. Yeah. Uh, which hotel? That was. It not was the at a, No, it was at uh, Palms. Palms. Yes. Either yes. way. Yeah, it was yes. an NVIDIA event on right. a Sunday night. Probably the one where they maybe showed off. No, it wasn't the first Shield. I don't think it was the Shield portable either. But it was like it was related to Android. And yeah, we saw Dennis Robin hanging out afterwards. Super yeah. awkward, but great guy. I wanted to get a yeah, I wanted to get a picture with him and he would not he was not having it. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Dennis. My bad. <laughs> Uh, Eli asks, did you guys try the Impossible Burger 2.0? Uh, I love meat. Have not had the Impossible Burger 2.0. I know they announced it at the show. Uh, I've never even had the original Impossible Burger. I mean, a lot of friends of mine love the Impossible Burger. It's at a whole bunch of restaurants in Portland. Uh, I've still not yet had it. Maybe one I've day. It. Have you? Yeah, Impossible Burger, it's okay. Because I know it's not meat. I right. don't enjoy it as much. Yeah. Uh, but I guess if you were just to serve it to me and be like, hey, here, here's a beef patty, I've, it might trick me. I don't know. Yeah. It bleeds, man. It bleeds. 2.0 might really trick you. You never know. I hope it does because it'd probably be a good idea for me to cut back on the beef. On the beef. Probably not a bad idea. Did not try, though. Maybe maybe, maybe this will be the year. It's a new year. Maybe we'll try some, uh, some non-beef, some non-beef patties. I don't know. Yeah, uh, hard to uh, other than that, CES was, uh, you know, it was, it was another CES. I think, uh, like, we shortened our trip a whole day this year just because we just didn't really feel like we needed to be around that much. Yeah. Uh, and that, that, that actually paid off because it was actually slower than even normal. Still had a good time, but uh, I don't know. It, it's CES. I'm not here to be the other another dude that just complains about CES. We still had fun at it, but... Oh, do you want to share your story or do you want to not? I can sort of share. Um, are we talking about the casino? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so the it was late, late night hand. Yeah. It was late one evening, uh, not many moons ago. Uh, this was Monday night. And we, uh, Kellen and I, it was like, I don't know, one thirty. It was like one thirty in the morning, yeah. Yeah, we're on our way back to our room. Kellen had been losing money all night on the slots, and I'm not much of a gambler uh, because I've gone to Vegas before, obviously, for CES, and uh, the first year I went way back in the day, Mr. Pickles was there. Um, Shout out, Pickles. I blew a lot of money at the uh, blackjack tables, and it was stupid. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to spend like 50 bucks a year on gambling, just be very uh, cheap with it. Uh, Anyway, we're on our way back to our room. Uh, I see a let it ride table, $5 bets. And so Kellen got me into playing let it ride. It's a pretty new game in terms of, uh, in, uh, you know, when compared to other games like blackjack or anything that's been around for a long it's like time. It's like one of those weird hybrid games or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's fun because you, you, you don't lose a lot unless you're no. doing, playing it really stupid. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it's a poker variant. Uh, so you're playing poker hands. Uh, anyway, I was like, you know what, Kellen, hold on. We were like walking to the room. He already passed the table. And I was like, wait, dude, stop. Um, let's let's just I had fifteen dollars in my pocket cash, and I was like, let's just throw I'm gonna throw one hand down and we'll just see what happens. Anyway, I go up to the table, give the dealer my uh the money, put the chips down. I don't know if you know I don't know if I want to dive it really into let it ride and how it all works, but anyway, I put Three bets down uh, is the minimum that you can do. 
Uh, I get dealt the cards. Kellen got dealt his cards. I look at my hand and I see a flush, uh, three cards. And so I'm like, okay, flush. I guess that's pretty good. I look over to Ken. I'm like, this is good, right? Like, I want to keep this. And he's like, uh, yeah, dude, you want to keep that? Because automatically I'm a winner uh, if you get a flush out of the gate. <laughs> so I uh, put the cards down. Um, Kellen, I don't think he had much of no, anything. nothing, yeah. Yeah, so awesome. I'm like, I'm waiting for the hand to end so I can get my money and just get out of there. All of a sudden, the dealer flips over uh, two more hearts. I think it was a... It was a a flush of hearts that I had. So he turns over two more hearts. Turns out I have a straight flush. <laughs> and there's only one thing better than a straight flush, and that'd be a royal flush. So the fact uh, that I laid my hand down on all the money that I had bet uh, and didn't take away any money, if you know how Let It Ride works, um, I won a lot of money uh, <laughs> versus my initial bet. And so, so I was up huge, you know, uh, velvet ropes parted. The angels were singing. I'm <laughs> jumping up and down, et cetera. Like I mean, I think out. I even jumped up and down a little bit. Oh yeah, because uh, I've I've never won any type of real <laughs> money at a casino. Yeah, and uh, so the dealer, his jaw drops. He didn't even know what to do. Um, he he he's like <laughs> he's looking at his chips, like oh, I don't have enough to give this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he calls over the pit boss. Pit boss is like, oh my god, okay. So he's like, you know, how do you want it? And I say, big chips. I'm going straight to the counter. Let's just get out of here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, cash now. And then all of a sudden, some creepy guys kind of behind us to the right with this like kind of hoodie on. Things were looking <laughs> sketchy. And like, yes. I, you know, they're counting out money. And I'm like, okay, would you mind having security get us, bring us back to our hotel and our room, etc. Which was right next door. Yeah. Right next door. So we're escorted out of there. And it was a fantastic time, fantastic. and uh, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to bet again because <laughs> I don't think just, you should. you're never going to beat that. So <laughs> Probably not. Dealer yeah, did so tell you he had never seen it before. So That's true. Never seen it before. So it was awesome. It was great. Uh, it was a great time. I never have times like that in Vegas. We know Kellen uh, doesn't have times like that. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm, ter- I'm a terrible gambler. Yeah. yeah, Kellen gets slammed on the Let It Ride tables. So okay. yeah, it was a good time. Fun stuff. Yep. Uh, so anyway, we're we're back from CS. CS is over till next year. Uh, next up will be Mobile World Congress, which we don't go to. So, but that'll be lots of announcements. So if you were bored with CS, just wait a month, and then you got Galaxy S10, and then MWC right after that with a whole bunch of stuff, uh, and then we'll get closer to 5G. So it's gonna get crazy. So if you're a little bored right now, I I, I totally understand, but it's it's gonna get great. Um, all right, so moving out of CES. Well, this was kind of a CES topic, but AT&T, and I think we talked about this on the last show, they're going to roll out a software update that puts a 5G E logo on a whole bunch of their phones, which stands for 5G Evolution, which is not 5G. It's just 4G. And we, we've talked about that's it, misleading and it's garbage that they're doing it. Um, so um, 5G E is now rolling like it started as we were at ces so some people's phones started getting the update i think they started with the galaxy s8 active and so if you own an s8 active it will have a 5g e logo uh no that does not mean you have 5g and it's going to be super misleading all the way through until we get 5g and then what they're going to do is then phones will have 5g which at t is calling 5g plus and so you go from 5G E to 5G. It's going to be super confusing. And anyway, uh, everybody called AT&T out on it. Verizon did. T-Mobile did. They all clowned them. Uh, AT&T finally gave an interview, I believe, to Tom's Guide. And they said, look, we just want to, we're really proud of this. We want to show everyone that they're getting a big network upgrade. And that's like missing the point, though. Why don't you just call it 4G LTE plus or advanced? Or like, why, why call it? Because that's what it is. It's LTE advanced. But they want to call it 5G evolution. It's. It's super skeezy, but that's what at and doing. So mm-hmm. uh, that's happening. Uh, and and they're not going to stop with just the S8 active. Like if you're on at and and you have an S9, Note 9, whatever, you are bound to get an update that will change your phone to a 5G logo. And what's garbage about that too is a lot of these people, they're just going to have the same connection they've had every day for the last year or so. Uh, even they could have been in a 5G E like market and they were just getting maybe slightly faster 4G LTE speeds. But now they're going to get a new logo and the same speeds they were getting. Like, it's just, it's absolute garbage. So, uh, Anyway, so moving on to that, uh, this actually might be the final topic. Short show today. So January security patch for Android is out um, only on 
Pixel devices for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Usually, usually when we write these up, we say it's live for Pixel and Nexus devices. No more for Nexus. So we've got uh, new 9.0 updates for Pixel 3, 3XL, 2, 2XL, and then OG Pixel and Pixel XL. And then there's an 8.1 patch for the Pixel C. First time ever, Nexus 6P and 5X did not see a uh, did not see an update. So that's the end for those two. And they got like at least one, maybe two extra months worth of updates. Actually, a year or so ago, Google gave them until I think it was at least October. Like they expanded it a couple of months anyway. And then they also got updates in November and December when I think they were supposed to be cut off. Or no, maybe they just got an extra one in December. Either way, the end is here. Rest in peace, Nexus 5X, 6P. Namaste, there, Nexus. <laughs> there are no more. There are no more Nexus devices in the wild getting updates, which is uh, get dead on Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. Which is, which is kind of sad. I don't know that I miss the Nexus line because I think the Pixel line is really good, and the Nexus line oftentimes was the cheapest phone ever, which is why they sold them for like three fifty at some point. Like in the post where I said rest in peace, Nexus six P and five X, you know, I kind of made this little joke at the end about like tell us all the fun stories about your Nexus five X boot looping and how easily your six P bent. Cause those were kind of the two gates that came with those, right? And if you look, it it really is um comments filled with people complaining about their five X boot looping. And like I like a good friend of mine had a five X, which I think I probably told him was an okay buy at the time because it was before the boot looping started and he definitely had boot looping issues and then the 6p uh was a phone that just was a little on the softer side <laughs> just uh just bent a little bit if you touched it the wrong way so yeah i, I don't think i missed the nexus line i know i i probably get shot by most android uh uh elitist for saying i don't miss nexus but they weren't ever great like name a, a nexus phone that was actually great 6p that was probably the closest, right? The closest to being a great. It was the closest one. I, I mean, I'll give you that. That was like the close. Like, I know, like I was joking about it bending. Like mine did never bend. I didn't sure. have that problem. And it was like solid metal. It looked kind of nice. It did have a giant Huawei logo, I think, didn't it? Or did it say Nexus on the back? No, just a Is little Huawei. Back? Yeah, Nexus. Yeah. Little Huawei on the bottom. Yeah, and, and that phone was actually probably the only one I would call a good Nexus phone. Um, I enjoyed the Nexus 5 a lot uh, when it launched with KitKat. It came in yeah. red and white. Yeah. That was hot. had LTE. Its camera is just absolute trash. Yeah, of course. Uh, I liked the <laughs> Galaxy Nexus. Of course, it was trash. But it was, <laughs> I mean, these at the time, I mean, we're, we're speaking in relative terms here. Like, these were good phones. Um, no camera the, was amazing back I then. I loved the 4, but it didn't have LTE and the camera was, oh, trash, was trash. And it had a glass back phone. that broke. Yeah, uh, the the six was the whale. Whether it was Gosh, built man, good or not, it was a whale. Thing sucked. I'm just like, like, I mean, come on, like there wasn't really a great. The six P is probably it. The six P is probably the it. it was thing. actually a really good phone. Yeah, great. It camera. didn't have a bunch of issues. Had a good camera. Yeah. Just saying, I don't miss Nexus. Right. That I mean, much I'm, I'm, for I'm happy that was. Pixel is here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely happy the Pixel is here. Uh, I, I think that's all I got to talk about. <laughs> We're not doing trivia, so uh, no trivia dance. Uh, there hasn't been a lot going on the last week. I mean, it was CS, but it wasn't that cool. So I don't know. We still wanted to do a show. It's always good to oh, talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah. For everyone who stuck with us, even though there was no trivia, you guys are the real <laughs> MVPs. Thank you so much. We will be back. Uh, our next show will definitely have trivia. Don't worry yes. about it. This is not a trend for 2019. No, this is not a trend. We just, it's we, the, did, it's been a long week. Exactly. We're just, we're <laughs> ready to kind of fall asleep. At least I am. <laughs> Clint says, give us the dance anyway. I, I mean, I don't have any, anyway. I don't, I don't have anything to give away. Mm. There you go. Woosa. <laughs> little trivia little trivia it's dance. meditative um yeah it is i think everyone who's watching you just do it with us it's it's good it's good for you get that blood flowing <laughs> bring the palms together namaste yes oh speaking of that coffee yeah i was uh thinking about maybe doing some yoga this year but man yoga sucks like it's so boring um actually really like I'm, yoga it's just it takes really? a while it takes a while. Uh, i get 
so bored. My mind just wanders and I can't pay attention to what I'm doing. My breath. and Which is probably yeah. why you need to do it. No. Because I need to go when you, Call of Duty. Well, that <laughs> too. Because the times I've done yoga for an extended period of time, about like the second or third time, the first time you don't know what the hell's going on. Second time you're kind of starting to figure it out. Then third, fourth, like it kind of becomes like, this calming thing and you can do versions that actually give you a workout where you're not just trying to be in this peaceful moment. You can actually do it where it whoops your ass. So you should try it. It's actually pretty good. I I haven't done it for a while, but, and partly because of what you just said, like I don't have the patience for it, but once you get into it, I don't want my ass to be whooped by yoga. (laughs) I mean, that just, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. I'd rather like take a drive, a relaxing drive. That's not relaxing Uh, at all to me. Oh, that sounds so relaxing to me right now. Just a drive. (laughs) I just want to drive, put on some music, and just drive, cruise down the highway. <laughs> All right. And you know, honk at terrible organ honk. drivers. Yeah. Swerve. <laughs> I mean, that just sounds awesome. Anyway. All right, guys. Well, uh, if nothing else, February 20th is the big day for now. Well, We'll probably get some 5G announcements in between then. Yep, we'll be back most weeks here with shows. We'll have trivia for sure. We're going to try to give away even more stuff this year. Don't worry. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Droid Life hoodies. (laughs) They're awesome. (laughs) I think they're only like 30 bucks, too. The t-shirts are like 16. We tried to drop those things as low as we possibly could. So if you you have ever been interested in the uh, DL swag, they are probably just right below the video. And we dropped them like all the way down. Like that's as low, I think, as like the company that makes them would let us go. So 16 or 30, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, just mm-hmm. do not stick them in the dryer. Just put them in the washer. Then let them, let them air dry. Oh, that so guy I dried. And he's fine. That in the dryer dryer? Oh, yeah. I dried that guy. I, he was totally fine. I'm telling you. The t-shirts no I would not. The, the, the hoodie was fine. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> all right, Horse guys. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. We'll... Uh, We'll uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for joining us. Peace. Peace.